Hi, I'm Stan Lyle, and this is Master Math's lesson on rational numbers. During the lesson, you're going to see some You Try It pages. Don't let them bother you. They're not that confusing. You'll be able to work with it. Simply hit the pause button, do the problem on the page, and then hit the forward button to move on to the next page. I think you're going to like what we have going for you today and enjoy yourself at Master Math. Today we're going to talk about rational numbers. Well, what, what does that mean, a rational number? Is it like a rational man who thinks a lot? No, that's not it. The word rational number comes from ratio. A ratio is a relationship of one subgroup to another subgroup. For instance, the teacher to student ratio was one teacher to 18 students. Or it could be written 1 to 18, or it could be written 1 over 18, or 1 per 18. Rational number, then, is any number that can be written as a ratio of two integers. For instance, 12 is a rational number because I can write it as the ratio of 24 to 2 or of 12 to 1. Minus 6 is also a rational number. I can rewrite that as minus 6 to 1. Minus 1 half is a rational number because I can write it as minus 1 over 2. Zero, however, is not a rational number because I cannot create a ratio of any two integers that would equal zero. So, any rational number can be converted to a decimal. One over five can be converted to a decimal. It's a rational number. One over five equals one divided by five, which equals 0.2. There are two kinds of uh, decimals. One's a terminating decimal, and the other's a repeating decimal. A terminating decimal is one which, when we uh, create the decimal, it ends. The numbers end and are followed by a, a lot of zeros. So, for instance, one half is a terminating decimal. One divided by two equals 0 0.5, or 0 0.5000000 forever. It ends at the five. So it's a terminating decimal. A repeating decimal is one which goes on forever repeating the same number or numbers. For instance, 1 divided by 9 becomes 0 .1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and the 1's go on forever. The 1's repeat. Now there's a symbol to tell us that it's a repeating decimal, and that's, that's this little uh, line above the 1 there. Point 0.1 with the line above it is read point 0.1 repeating. If you're having trouble with decimals, it may be worthwhile for you to review our lesson on fraction decimal equivalency. To understand what a rational number is, it may be easier to understand what it's not. It's not an irrational number, and there's very few irrational numbers, so uh, most numbers are rational. An irrational number is a number that cannot be represented as either a terminating or repeating decimal. The most famous ration, irrational number is pi. Pi equals 3.14159265.3 and onward and onward forever. Um, so, it never terminates, it goes on forever, and it doesn't repeat. You don't see uh, uh, the 1 repeating or the 1, 4 repeating. It just goes on forever with different numbers. So, that's an irrational number. The rules and procedures for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with rational numbers are the same as those <coughs> for doing these operations with integers. If you need to refresh your memory on the rules for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing integers, go back to the lessons adding and subtracting integers and multiplying and dividing integers, 
and you can review the, these rules. Write one and one fifth in decimal form. Is it a repeating or a terminating decimal? Is it a rational number? Hit your pause key, try this problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. One and one fifth could be rewritten one plus one fifth. That could be rewritten five over five plus one fifth because one equals five over five. Five over five plus one over five equals six over five. Now let's convert that to a decimal. Six divided by five equals 1.2 or 1.2000000. So it converts, to, one and a, one and a fifth converts to the decimal form 1.2. And it's a terminating decimal because the decimals end at the two. And it's a rational number because it's a terminal decimal. Hit your pause key, solve this problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Write this mixed number as a fraction, 1.25. Well, 1.25 equals 1 plus 0.25. Now, I've got to convert that 0.25 to a fraction, so I'm just going to carry the 1's forward and convert. 0.25 equals 25 over 100. Now, you should remember from our uh, fraction uh, decimal equivalency lesson that uh, the way you find out what to put the 25 over is by figuring out what place the second number is in. The 2's in the 10th place, the 5's in the 100th place. So, 0.25 converts to 25 over 100 because the 5's in the 100th place. So now I got 1 plus 25 over 100, but I can reduce 25 over 100. 25 goes into itself once, 25 goes into 100 four times, so 25 over 100 equals 1 quarter, and 1 plus 1 quarter equals 1 and a quarter. Hit the pause button, try this one, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Alright, in this problem, we're asked to figure out which is longer, 3 and 5 eighths feet or 3 and 7 twelfths feet. Now we could do this two ways. We could convert the 5 eighths and the 7 twelfths to common denominators and then we could compare the numerators and figure out what was bigger. But I'm going to convert them to decimals because I think that's a little bit easier. So first let's look at 3 and 5 eighths feet. And I have to convert the 5 eighths feet to a decimal equivalency. So I do that by dividing 5 by 8 and I'll get a decimal. Over here I've done that 5 divided by 8 and I get 0.625. So 0.625 is the decimal equivalency of 5 over 8 and it's a terminating decimal because I end up at the bottom of the uh, division problem with a 0 it ends so 3.58 equals the terminating decimal 3.625 feet. Now let's convert 3 feet and 7 twelfths feet to a decimal. And I do that the same way. I divide the 7 by 12 and I get 0.583. But this is a repeating decimal because I, I continue to get 3 after 3 after 3 after 3 if I kept uh, had more space at the bottom of the board and kept uh, dividing it out. So 7 twelfths equals 0.583 repeating. And 3 and 7 twelfths equals 3.583 three repeating. Now I can look at, at these numbers and compare them pretty easily. 3.625 
3.63, 3.625s larger, and Juanita caught the larger fish. Try this one. Hit the pause key. When you get done, hit the forward arrow to go to the answer. Well, in this problem, your dad's acting like a bank, and he keeps your money, and he lends you money. And right now, you, end up, you owe him $41.35. But he lets you wash his car and agrees to pay you $15 for that. You agree to reduce your debt to your dad by paying him the $15 and ending up with a less indebtedness to your dad. So what is your indebtedness to your dad after you wash the car? Well, you start out with minus money in your bank of dad. That's minus $41.35. But then you make a deposit to the bank of dad for the amount of money that you uh, earned washing his car, and that was plus $15. So we get the difference of minus $41.35 and positive $15, and that's $26.35. And it's going to be a negative number because the negative number up above is bigger than the positive number. The absolute value of 4135 exceeds the absolute value of 35 or of 15. So the difference is going to be a negative number minus $26.35. Try this one. Hit the pause key when you're done. Hit the forward arrow. Okay, your mom's car holds 19.5 gallons of gas when full, or 19.5 gallons of gas when full. The tank is now two-thirds full. How much gas will it take to fill it up? Well, the first thing you've got to figure out is if it's two-thirds full, how much gas is it going to require to fill it up to a full tank? Well, a full tank is one. That's a whole. But we've got two-thirds of, uh, of a, a tank in there right now, so I have to subtract the two-thirds. So 1 minus two-thirds equals 3 over 3 minus two-thirds equals 1 over 3. It will take one-third of a tank full of gas to fill it up. Now I've got to figure out how, how much one-third of a tank full of gas is. And again, a whole tank is 19.5 gallons, but I only need one-third of that to fill it up. So it's one-third times 19.5. Now, I could do this a couple of ways. I could convert one-third to a decimal and multiply, and that that decimal uh, equivalency is 0.333 repeating or 0.3 repeating. So I could multiply 0.3333333 times 19.5 and I'd get the right answer. Or I could divide 19.5 by 3 because multiplying 1 over 3 times 19 over 5 is the same as 19.5 over 3. And when I divide 19.5 over th by 3, I get 6.5, 6.5. Well, that's our lesson on rational numbers. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info, find the worksheets page, under 7th grade, first quarter, find and download the worksheet on rational numbers. Print it, try your skill, and come, come back again soon to mastermath.info.